everybody. Gotta say, I've been hearing some rumors about you guys. A couple in particular, not naming any names. I hear that this is a group that likes to hear a good story. Yes. Story time, is that right? Yes. Maybe? <laughs> well, come with me if you will then. I've got a story to tell you this morning, and I think you'll like where it ends. Now, this isn't a fairy tale. <laughs> it takes place on Capitol Hill in the Grand LaFalle Metro Station, the morning rush hour, if you can imagine. People running, rushing, striding, never a sauna to be seen in sight, caramel macchiatos and coffees clutched tight, and the sound. Slipping around the corner from the arcade, steeping the air where the melodies played, wafting through tunnels, waking the morning from its slumber. That sound, what was it? Is that, is that a violin? And there it was, the source, an, an average looking street musician. Open suitcase yawning, begging dollars, drinking quarters, horse hair bow dancing, intricate melodies, minor eighth notes, weaving tapestries. And he played and he played, and a thousand and ninety seven people passed by, barely glancing. Seven paused for just a bit. And one man stopped for nine minutes and he asked himself, Am I hearing things? What is this? Because there was something astounding about this violinist. The skill, the precision, there was something different he could tell, and only one woman that morning figured it out. The violinist was Joshua Bell. Joshua Bell, the former child prodigy. He was in town to play at the Library of Congress and just three days before, he had built the Symphony Hall at Boston. This was a man whose talents could earn him a thousand dollars a minute. He was even playing, he was playing on his 1713 Stradivari instrument. Turns out, this was a little Washington Post experiment about people's talents and other people's recognition of them. And on that morning, for the span of 43 minutes, passers-by tipped Bell $32.17. Yes, I know what you're thinking. That means some of that was nickels and pennies. And Bell said when he played, he almost got butterflies because when the songs would end, there would just be silence. Nobody clapping. They weren't even acknowledging him. And in such a short time, it almost started to wear on him. Now, we would think it a shame or a ridiculous thing for Bell to look at that crowd and put down his dream. Set down the rosin and the bow, trade it in for something more practical. But sometimes we do the same thing. But Bell had learned a few things. And what many have found is that there are some things you just can't base your value on, and one is the fickle opinion of the crowd. You see, Agatha Christie had five years of being told no, and at 140 rejections was a little book called Chicken Soup for the Soul. You think that's a lot? Ask C.S. Lewis. That man got 800 rejection slips. Louisa Mayaka, they told her, you should just stick to teaching. Michael Jordan, cut from his high school team. They told Elvis, Elvis, Elvis the King, he was better off a truck driver, and Walt Disney lacked imagination and had no good ideas, so they fired him. This is what we're surrounded with. These are the voices that we're surrounded with. And if ever there were a message that I could get across to you, it's that your value is not in their recognition of you. Because some people may never give us the affirmation that we need, but that does not change whom we were meant to be. And we don't have time to pick up distractions and sidetrack our minds with a million suggestions about why we choose are not good enough to do the things and be the ones that we were born into this very space and time to do and be. We can't get so caught up in the words around us of, everyone's opinions and everyone's voices, that we push it to the edge for a pat on the shoulder, playing brinkmanship like the hunt for the Red October. Because I'll tell you right now that they can like you, love you, hurt you, hate you, turn hot and cold, or set the cycle on lukewarm, apathetic, and walk away, and you cannot base your value on if they go or if they stay. It's got to be based on something deeper than that. Because the truth, the truth is this. And you let it sink deep. And you call for it every time that you need. That you are enough. You are good. You are loved. You are more than enough. You're worth more. More than every grain of, 
Every second in time that it represents as it sifts back and forth in the hourglass of the infinite ever coming and ever going tide. An uncalculated and unfathomable price. You've got to realize that value inside. That you're enough. You are good. You are loved. You are more than enough. So everybody just, just take a second right now. And everyone take a deep breath. And then jump back in the game. Former cowardly lion. Take it back from the poppy field to the road and just annihilate it. Full force and full speed ahead. The little engine that could and did duck the haters, throttle faster. Take it to the passing land like the Dukes of Hazard. And every story that was placed on pause from a word or a look or a lack of a nod. Find that dream and the song and the life you were given. Find your freedom again and you start to walk in it. No matter what you hear around you, steady the ship. Let this anchor ground you that you have better things to do and be. I believe they call that phrase your destiny. You can do it. You are enough. You are good. You are loved. You are so much more than enough. So pick up that bow again and Joshua Bellick. Come on, dreamers. Rise above it. Woo!